Hi, welcome. Uh, in this video segment, we're going to be looking at one of the many models that we have available uh, to help us represent the atomic structure. Now, whenever we're doing these models, often what we find is the most complicated gives us the most information, but then it's also more complicated and more frustrating um, to draw. Uh, so we want to use the model that provides us with the, the information that we need in a way that reliably represents the atom. Um, but we also don't want to do more than we need in a sense. Okay, so we're going to look at how we are going to use those quantum numbers, M, L, M sub L, and M sub S, our, our spin, our electron spin, our orientation shape and energy level and we're going to look at how electrons would be placed in those so that they maximize attractions and minimize repulsions. So for now we're going to start with the ground state, that lowest state available. Now an orbital diagram shows as much detail as possible. They, oh, there's a typo. All four quantum numbers. Um, but they can be a little annoying to draw. So the next one that's a little simpler is an electron configuration. Okay, so we're going to be learning these over a series of videos. Now, um, each element is going to have its own orbital diagram, its own electron configuration. And that's going to provide us with the information that we need to then begin to do properties and function because structure determines function. Now, just a reminder, when we're talking about our principal quantum number n, it gives us our quantum number n gives us energy and distance. And here's the key. I wish in a perfect world electrons went in 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d. If they would fill all the, you know, the 2s, all the 3s, all the 4s, all the 5s in order, but they don't. We find that distance stays true. And what that means is as I increase n, I increase distance. But as these electrons are going in, orbitals change in energy. I, I liken it to kind of the Mario Brothers where as they're hopping into energy or into those little levels, they move a little bit. And in a sense, that's what's happening. Our energy gets a little bit mixed up. It doesn't quite fill in the order that we ex expect. Now, the good news is the periodic table is going to give us um, the perfect arrangement, and it's going to break that code for filling order. You're not going to have to memorize anything. Um, but it's challenging to get into that aspect of it before you see these models. So what I'm going to ask you to do is trust me. Trust me on the order. Just hold that thought for a minute and you'll see how the periodic table um, will provide us with what we um, need, okay? Now, as we look at these, what we are finding is that our, and these are just terms to interpret these diagrams, our outermost electrons are in the highest energy level because distance stays true to n. So you found your highest n value, and those are your outermost. Now we're going to be filling from low energy to high energy. So what that means is that our highest energy electrons will be the last sublevel we were filling doesn't have to be a filled sublevel, but it's the last sublevel into which we were adding electrons. Okay. All right. I know this is a little fuzzy, or I'm betting it's a little fuzzy, but, but just hold on. I think it's all going to fall into place. 
Let's learn a few rules. Aufbau. Aufbau principle, that's German for build up. And the Aufbau principle says is as we're taking the total electrons in an atom and placing them into the model, electrons are placed into orbitals of the lowest energy first. Okay. The Pauli exclusion principle says that any orbital can hold only two electrons. Okay, so that's one thing. And no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. Okay, now what that means is, so you need to know the official um, wording of the Pauli exclusion principle, no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. What that means is we're going to put electrons in spins opposite. So they could have the same L, N, they could have the same L, they could even have the same M sub L, but as long as we put them in spins opposite, we'd have a plus one half and a minus one half. And so that fourth quantum energy would be different. So the spins opposite are how we make it so that they don't, we, we meet Pauli exclusion principle. And then lastly, we have Hund's rule. Now, remember, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to be for an orbital diagram depicting orbitals as lines. So each line represents an M sub L or an orbital. Okay. Now, we want to always maximize attraction and we want to minimize repulsion. And so what Hund's rule says is once we have a single sublevel, within that sublevel, we're going to put the electrons in unpaired, spins up first, before we pair them. That minimizes repulsion because two electrons in one orbital have greater repulsion than if than these two, which would be in different orbitals. So when filling a sublevel, equal energy, one in, enters each orbital separately, so unpaired until each is full. I'm trying to, I don't, so we want to put them in unpaired until each orbital is full. And then we pair them up. Okay, so that's Hun's rule. So let's see how that goes in our next video. So let's apply this to arsenic, um, this model of the uh, an orbital diagram. Arsenic has 33 electrons. Now, you just have to trust me for now this filling order. Um, but let me show you how we would do it. We'd put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice I followed Hun's rule there. Eight, nine, ten. That was Polly's rule. Spins opposite. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Hun's rule unpaired. First, poly paired up with spins opposite. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. <clears throat> so now, if we look at our outermost electrons, we want the highest n. So our outermost electrons are the 4s2 and the 3p3. So as you notice how I wrote that is that's our energy level, that's my sublevel, and that too tells me my number of electrons. Okay, 4p3. All right, now our highest energy electrons were the last ones we were filling, which are these, the 4p, the last sublevel 
into which we were putting electrons. Now you can see this takes a lot of space. Often I'll let my students go from low energy to high energy simply left to right. Saves a little space. Electron configurations do that even a little better. So if I were to write the electron configuration from this, I'd have 1s, energy level 1, s sublevel 2, then I've got 2s, 2, 2p, 6, 3s, 2, 3p, 6. Now I know you'd kind of want the d's to go here, but if we're going by low energy to high energy, we have to slip those 4s2 electrons in there, 3d10, 4p3. Now, if you add up all these subscripts, you should get to 33 electrons. You notice that's a little easier to draw than the orbital diagram. But what the orbital diagram does for us is it shows us these unpaired electrons. So what is not unusual is to do the electron configuration, and then if you need more information, do the orbital diagram of that last sublevel. Okay, so obviously you have to do what the, um, what the question asks you to do, but that would be an example. Okay, now since we have the orbital here, I want to show you something. What if I wanted to do an excited state? Remember I said we were going to be doing ground state. An excited state would be as if we took an electron from here and put it up at a higher energy level. Okay, so just taking an electron that's where you would think it would be at a lower energy and moving it to a higher energy. That's excitation. So I wanted to link that with what we saw in that Bohr model. Okay, so we're going to continue this conversation and in the next video start uh, discussing how our periodic table will provide this filling order. You don't need to memorize this filling order. Okay, thanks for joining me. Take care.